Well, now it's time to update you about the excitement that's going on on Mars. Perseverance and Ingenuity. Perseverance is the rover, Ingenuity is the little helicopter there. And this is a selfie that was taken by Perseverance, believe it or not. This is from uh, the crater on Mars where it's exploring right now. It's been there a little more than a year. Well, the Mast Cam, Mast Cam Z, took a very, very interesting series of photos that they stitched together to make a little movie. Let's take a look at it now. Oh my goodness. This is a, a solar eclipse that's happening here, not a lunar eclipse, but a solar eclipse of sorts. Although that's an awfully strange shape. It's a space potato <laughs> crawling across the surface of the, the sun. Those are sunspots in the background that it's crossing right now. You can see some sunspots in the upper right of the sun. But this is a real movie. Believe it or not, this is this isn't fake. This is what was seen. They stitched together a lot of photographs of it, and it ends there. Now, what was that? Well, that was the moon Phobos. Phobos is a small, rocky moon that orbits very close to the surface of, of Mars. I forget how large it is. Do either of you remember the physical size of it? Oh, ballpark of 10 miles. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's not huge. I could look it up. But anyway, you, could, you can Google it yourselves and take a look at it. This is not the first time we've seen um, an eclipse by, any of, by, by one of the two Martian moons. There's Phobos and Deimos, um, and both were seen by opportunity. So let's take a look at those. It's a little faster on that one. And then here goes Deimos, which is smaller. It's a much smaller, rocky little moon, and it does take longer to cross the surface of the sun. Now let's take a look at why. Here's a little animation that our very own Chris Butler did for us. And let me get it started here for us. We'll take the sun and due to the rotation of Mars, the sun appears to go from the east to the west, just like it does here on Earth. And the sun is catching up to Deimos. Now Deimos orbits the other direction. It orbits west to east, but due to the rotation of Mars, it too looks like it's going to the west slightly. Oh, and here comes Phobos. Phobos is so much closer, it moves faster in the sky, travels across the surface of the sun quicker. So Deimos appears to go backwards in the sky due to the rotation of the planet where Phobos whips around going prograde. So um, if that confused you, you can watch it over and over again and send us a tweet to ask us <laughs> how the heck that works and we'll answer it, to, answer it for you. Another interesting thing that's happened on Mars is the back shell and parachute have been spotted. So remember, Perseverance came in at a high rate of speed. There was uh, heating on that uh, heat shield that slowed it down. They popped open a parachute. They got rid of the heat shield. They uh, ranged the bottom, the ground. They figured the target, and then they finally ejected that back shell. So let me show you here where that happens. Right here, that back shell and parachute get ejected, and then it comes down on a sky crane. Well, that back shell and parachute were spotted in from orbit by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and the high-rise instruments. You can see them there crashed into the surface. Well, Perseverance has finally traveled close enough that it too saw the back shell and the parachute. You can see them right there. I've pointed them out, the, the big arrow points them out for you. Um, now, we got a better view yet. Remember, we have a helicopter on Mars, a little helicopter that can fly around. So they sent Ingenuity to go take a look and it flew over or very close to the parachute in the back shell and there they are the parachute on the right hand side looks a little torn up maybe it's been moving around in the wind a little bit and that back shell sure enough smacked into the ground hard enough it was broken now this was requested by the folks that are building the back shell um, for future missions they wanted to know how did it survive through the heat at the heating of the atmosphere as it came in um, and also how did it survive the crash? They can estimate the speed that it would have come in on that parachute crashing into the surface and find out how well it did. So people were making jokes about, you know, flying saucer found on Mars, is it sure looks like a flying saucer to me too. <laughs> but really cool looking pictures. Um, and, and some folks might want to say, well, we're leaving garbage on Mars. And it, it, this is the price you pay in order to go do the science. We don't really have the ability to go pick this up right now, but in the future, these are going to be museum pieces. Somebody's going to go to Mars, pick them up, and put them in the Great Mars Museum for some of the first exploration that we've done there, along with some of the other uh, robot explorers we've sent to Mars. Now, Ingenuity just didn't look at the back shell. It also looked at this interesting rock outcrop. You can see how it looks like it's tilted, and it's sticking out of the sand a little bit there, the dust. Um, 
They wanted to know more about it and, and learn whether this was tilted similarly to other layers deeper into the, the crater. Um, not sure what they found out about that, but it's an interesting picture. Now, Perseverance itself has been hightailing it towards the delta. That's what it was sent to go do, look for signs of life in that delta that was put in by an ancient river into this crater. So here um, is where it landed, and you can see the path it's taken to drive over towards that delta in that area called Three Forks. In fact, there it is, the delta, and you can see the path that it took. Now, it did explore a little bit the opposite direction. We left that off there to start, and you can see, let me mark it with a laser pointer for you again, um, it landed and then originally headed off this direction, did some exploring, oh, not that far, did some exploring and sampled the crater floor. They wanted to know what just the crater floor was like, and then they've hightailed it in an about much, much less time than it took to do that first exploration. It's gotten all the way over here, very, very close to the delta, which is this material in the upper left image there. So they're, they're finally at the main mission target, and they're getting ready to explore there. Now, NASA Perseverance Server hightails it to the Martian Delta, and indeed that's what it's done. There's an image of that Delta wall. That material was deposited by an ancient rover. Now, there's some interesting material in the foreground there that's sort of lighter in color that might be sort of a, a, a mudstone of some sort that was planted in the, you know, in the lake that was there rather than just brought in by the, the Delta itself. It might have been material sinking down through the lake. Here's a close-up of some of that material, and they were thinking of perhaps using this and analyzing it, doing a sample there and storing that sample to bring back to Earth later. They've declined doing that right now. They don't want to waste too many of their sample containers. They're more interested in that delta material coming from the river than they are in this potential mudstone. So this is what's going on at Perseverance right now, or on Mars right now with Perseverance, and that's a beautiful panorama of that delta material and the rover is going to head up that direction and start doing more in situ uh, observations with its instruments but also seek out the right rocks to store and then cache in other words put them in a safe location to be retrieved later by a robotic explorer and brought back to earth where we can study them in a lab